Hi, I'm Jamie Shuttleworth and today I'm going to service a Ford Falcon 2002 U. So we'll go through what's on the table here. You need that to undo the oil filter. I like to use thread sealant on the sump plug and also on the diff plug just to stop it weeping. And we'll use this to undo the sump plug. The car has had overheating problems so we've run radiator flush through it. Um, we've already done a flush, we've already topped it up with normal water, but we'll drain the water and then we'll put coolant in there. So we'll also service the battery terminals. We've got some baking soda to clean the battery terminals and then we've got some anti -cor corrosion stuff to stop, it, to stop the terminals corroding. Um, we've got our oil to go in there. Ford say five and a half litres, but most of the time the car will take five litres because five litres, will st half a litre will still be floating around in the engine somewhere. But we put that in there after we've drained it and then we just check with the dipstick and we know if we need more oil. Coolant, we'll check the brake fluid. We've got an oil filter to go in. This is our anti-spill uh, funnel for when we put the coolant in there. But we'll, um, we'll just lift the bonnet and we'll disconnect the battery. It's just handy to disconnect the battery in case you You've got a spanner under there and you hit, it, hit the starter motor wire or something, it's just handy to disconnect, disconnect the battery then you don't have that problem. Just grab the tools. The motor's been running so the oil's hot, so the oil will, will drain good to conform. I'm going to take the battery completely out. So when we clean the, clean the terminals and we wash them off, we don't end up washing bits of acid and stuff into the engine bay, which creates rust. So we'll do the battery outside. When, when disconnecting the battery terminals, always disconnect the negative first, because if you accidentally touch it onto the chassis, nothing will happen. Same as when you connect the battery, always connect the positive first, and then when you put the negative on, nothing happens when you, if you accidentally touch the chassis when you do it up. And this battery is um, a non-serviceable battery, so we can't actually top up the water levels or anything on it. But a lot of batteries you can check the water level and top them up. And this battery's been working fine, so no complaint. The other thing we should have done before we started working on the vehicle is put some towels which are on the bench over there on the sides of the vehicle so we don't scratch the sides of the vehicle. And also if there was big scratches on the car somewhere when the car arrived in and you're unsure what to do about it, talk to your boss um, and see what he reckons and talk to the customer so you don't get blamed for scratches that were on the car before you started. Just gonna undo the oil cap so when we drain the oil, the motor won't get airlocked and it'll drain better. Just the hoist. Lift the ute. You want to try and get it in the centre on the vehicle or as far to each end 
you don't want too much weight front or back because then it will put weight on the hoist. And when you put a car on a hoist always have it in neutral with the handbrake off. So when you go to work on things everything's free and you can turn wheels and drive shafts and all that sort of thing. And you always have to lift the vehicle by the chassis. Okay. Also, when you disconnect the battery, you can hook a 12 volt or a 9 volt thing in a cigarette lighter. Uh, so then it will remember all your code so it doesn't reset your radio and all that sort of stuff. But we didn't worry about that because it's a pretty simple vehicle. I'm going to undo the radiator cap because when we drain the water, it'll stop it getting airlocked as well. So I'm going to bring it, bring it back down. This voice has automatic safety lock. That's what that noise is. So if something was to fail in the voice, it will fall to the I'm cool about this part because it's safety lock, that's what I'm sounding. back down to the safety lock so it's not sitting on the hydraulic ram. You always try and catch all the, all the oil and all the water that, you, that comes out of the vehicle. <coughs> now I'm sure, pretty sure there's a 15 mil, which is a weird size for the pump truck. fit under here. The biggest thing. The other thing is we should really wear eye protection and gloves. So I'll get them. <laughs> Especially if you're under a car. You don't want coolant and oil dripping your eyes. Gotta have your PPE. <coughs> Personal protection equipment. The one number one thing is try not to drop the sump plug because you drop the sump plug it blocks the funnel and then you get a big mess. It's a good idea to have a mesh a mesh um, thing in your funnel so it catches your sump plug if you drop it and it stops a lot of mess. And make sure your container is always bigger than the capacity of the oil that's going to come out of the vehicle. This, so this will be about five litres, so we've got a 10 litre container, so we'll, uh, we'll be right. Yep. <coughs> Let him drain. 
without doing that we'll try and crack the oil filter and then undo the oil filter Hello. I'm just going to crack it but I'm not going to um I'll just crack it and wait till the rest is drained so the easiest way to remove an oil filter is actually have a set of oil filter sockets which fit the filters it's the best way to, to do it but I haven't got them Uncalled universal, eh? Yeah, strap, oil filter strap. Universal. And it doesn't matter if you damage the filter getting it off, but you don't damage it putting it back on. Gotta be careful not to damage it putting it on. The oil will drip out of the oil filter normally, so you also have to have a container on it to stop the mess. Ideally you want a big tray that can catch both the oil from the sump and the oil from the oil filter. I'm putting the sump plug back in there. So I'll do the oil filter, then when I put the new oil filter on, I'll let the rest of the sump drain. should drain your oil filter overnight and then give it to the company that takes the oil With the oil filter be careful, make sure that the sealing o-ring on the oil filter hasn't let, stuck to the block because if the seal's still there and you put the other filter on, which is heaps, lots of people do, you have two seals and then the oil squirts out between the two seals and makes heaps of oil. Because the filter goes goes up that way we can actually prime the filter put a bit of oil in there so it's less oil the less work for the engine to pick pick the oil up because there's already oil in the filter because on an angle I'm not going to fill it right up because when I tip it all the oil is going to make a mess Just getting a little bit of oil to put on the seal because the seal needs to be oiled because otherwise if it's a dry fit it'll try and grip and it can scratch the seal and then it seals good. The 
most of the time you get away with just putting the full filter on as tight as you can with your hands if you um get a good grip <laughs> because it's very easy to damage the filter with a oil sort of strap. And when you take the vehicle for a test drive and that, just check for any oil leaks afterwards and that'll tell you whether your filter's leaking. Best thing to clean oil up is brake clean. <coughs> Normally doesn't damage anything. <coughs> and throttle body cleaner and brake cleaner is normally the same stuff. Biggest thing is make sure you don't get oil on anywhere, uh, any part of the exhaust system, because they'll burn and stink and customer might think the car's going to go on fire or something, freak out. I'm just trying to draw the rest of the coil. Not that there's going to be much to come out. While we're doing that, we'll check the diff oil, make sure that it's all in the diff, which is normally part of the standard service. What's that? Yeah, I've got a socket there. The other thing, it's a good idea to actually, um, if the car's pretty dirty, give it a bit of a clean where you think you're going to be working on it before you even put it on the hoist because you don't want mud and stuff everywhere and no one dirt getting the best thing for undoing anything um, sump plugs and all that is normally a ring star if you've got the correct size let me use a rattle gun on this one That's a sign that it's full. So, I mean, it's all good. You can also put your finger in there. If no oil comes out, put your finger in there. See if you can feel the level of the oil. The other thing is a good idea which I haven't done today but quite often if you're going to drain the oil out of an engine pull the dipstick out, clean the dipstick and sit it on the seat of the vehicle so then people or someone else doesn't try and start the vehicle without oil in it Just going to put it with a thread seal in and some bolt. That should help it stop leaking.
done. I'm done with this. Yeah. Well for now. Have you ever filled the box? No, it just makes that very much too late. That's on the joint. Yeah, we're not worried about that. Yeah, no. What's the door? This much. I think this is the other bolts. That's the other side right there. Doesn't matter, that's not part of the other yeah, thing. I don't worry about it. Probably the torque setting for these bolts, but I couldn't find it. I haven't got the service manual. I've got the whole capacity and things like that, but you could use the tension ramps. Because it's aluminium, it is quite easy to trick. It's on the bolt. Drain radiator should have a, a lot of radiators got drain bungs on them, but this one doesn't, so it's a bit messy. I've got a sump outside, normally I'll try and catch the water in the sump and then. the engine and spin the water pump over to get a bit more water out of it but not that fussy. And be careful that you don't want to do it under a hose while it's super hot because it'll burn you.
Oh, you're under the car too, just check. Uni joints. A lot of uni joints are greasable, so they're very greasy. Check for all legs. Check all your wheels, while it's in the air, wheel bearing noise. Side to side will normally tell you if there's play in your steering, knuckles and things. Up and down will tell you if there's wear in your, push down the bottom area and also your wheel bearing. You got a little bit of play, but. Yeah, if it makes a whirring sound, quite a bad whirring sound, means your wheel bearings buggy. <coughs> That's why you have a vehicle in neutral, so you can do this sort of thing. That noise, I'm saying it over the brakes, not a wheel bearing, but might look at that. Make sure there's nothing under your poison too when you go down. Yeah. Just stop. When you put oil in a car, um, it takes a while for the oil to get from the top of the bottom of the engine, so it'll reach it on the dipstick. And then we also, when you start the engine, it'll suck a bit of oil in. So, to get a correct reading on the dipstick, you have to run the motor. Just for probably five, ten seconds, and it'll suck enough oil, and then leave it sitting after that, and then see the sink, say five minutes, that'll give you a good accurate reading on the dipstick.
cup up the water, put a piece of water. The beauty of a no-fill funnel is when the water system is full, there's two real good things about it. You can have water sitting in here, the thermostat can be closed, and then when the thermostat opens, you'll see the water go down into the engine, which is great. The other thing is too, once the system's full, that you can have the water, the, it's gonna bleed itself automatically. You can have this overfull. When you, when you can see that the vehicle completely got the air out of the system, then you can cap the actual funnel and take away the excess water without making a mess. Now we'll go play with this battery. Baking soda will neutralise the acid and remove any acid. Baking soda and water. The reason why I don't do this in the car is because, as I said earlier, if there is acid, you're washing it down into the engine bay and then it creates rust. These, these terminals are clean because if the terminals have acid on them, they'll bubble up. Could hose the battery off as well, but that's pretty much. on first and before I do that I've got some uh, anti anti corrosion stuff which will stop the terminals corroding and you should wear gloves Ring spanners are the best to use for this, but this is a, um, I might get a little ring spanner. This is a ratchet ring spanner, so it's uh, got a bigger end on it. 
Make sure you always put the battery clamp on the car. Otherwise, you're in an accident, the battery will fall out. And there's no more battery I said all over you. Best to put some anti uh, corrosion stuff on the bolt too because it's very common for the bolt. You get corrosion from battery acid. Compound. Stops corrosion. We use it on wheel nuts as well. Fluid while I'm at it. I can see just by looking at the full, but on here you got full hot, full cold, but it's full like it's right at the top, so that's all good. And we'll check the brake fluid. Quite often you can see through the clear plastic was put out down this one. That's full, but I would replace that brake fluid. We won't do it today, but that's probably due to be completely replaced. It's only take about nine litres, so we're going to need more coolant. Distilled water in your radiator and in your battery. It doesn't matter what water you use. Did not need water. <laughs>
out of air cleaner. Always go that way, because that will not push the dirt out. If you blow it this way, it'll force the dirt into the paper. This is what you want. You want to reverse the way the dirt trying to get in. Taking any more water? Well, do you just buy one? No, no you never do that. No, not, not with that. Gonna check the tire pressures. The tire pressures, most cars, those door cars. Yeah. It says your tire pressures should be 30 pounds. 30 pounds, 30 pounds, so yeah. Just okay. So that says it's got 32 pound in it, which is correct. So we don't need to put any in or anything, but. You have to press the button in because that resets it, otherwise it'll give you the reading from the last time. Yep. When you have a car, car running in a workshop, make sure you've got the 
well ventilated. You could have come the offside thing. <laughs> Some vehicles have a bleed up, bleed the air out. Some doesn't look like it has, but this system should bleed itself automatically. Now we've got another issue with this vehicle when the handbrake doesn't work. So we're going to pull the back wheels off, pull the brakes apart, and try and find out what's going on, see if the cable works. Sort that out. I'll just turn this off. You want me to stick pressed up? Turn on six then. I'll use the other rattle gun. Have I? What a big one? Yeah. The big, big guy. Yeah. I'm doing a glitch. Just gonna put the vehicle to my height so it's easy for me to work on so I don't have to stand down. Right? I use this rattle gun for undoing the nut, but I won't use it for doing them up because it's over, well, over tension the nut. Not what I love when that happens. You, got, you grab a there, see? Yeah. Just grab a sincere seat. That's not even good. Good. Yeah, because if you put put CRC on the socket, you probably find it'll stop it grabbing on the nut. Make it come off easy. Well, so first we'll see if the handbrake cable works, so we'll get Shane to pull the handbrake on and off and um, now I can see if it's moving under here, now it's going to the cable seized or not. Yeah, that's pulling, so the cable's not seized, it releases. Either the, um, the brake shoes are worn out or the brake shoes just need to dust it up. So. Take 
can get a bracket bar on there. Those together, some more power. I'm going to take the caliper off, so then we can take the Break drum off. Break this. Could never put another spanner on a ratchet spanner, could you? Wreck a ratchet spanner. Quite often you can get a rattle gun in there and I know with a rattle gun but you can the room on this. And Ford used Loctite from the factory which is a nice thing to do. Oh. When using a rattle gun, you shouldn't use a um, uni joint because it can break the uni joint. And also, you should always use an impact socket because it can damage a normal socket. Brake pads, so uh, not don't need to replace, but they're past fifty percent worn. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Now I gotta put the wheels back on there. I'm gonna use a torque wrench, so I'm gonna use the tent the rattle gun to nip them up just loosely, and then I'm gonna use a torque wrench to check the torque of the nut. But to get a correct reading, you need to lube the, the end of the nut so that it doesn't bind into the aluminium, otherwise it'll read incorrectly. And I'm also gonna put a bit of anti-seize on there too so the nuts won't rust onto the onto the studs. So I'll do that. Or anti seize. Just need a little bit to so the threads stop stop the threads rusting up. straight up so then I can hold the wheel with the top stud straight up. Easy to line up. And I like to put them on by hand so you don't wreck the thread. Because I've got a nut at the top, two down the bottom, that should pull the tire evenly on. You can also spin the wheel over to uh, see if it's buckled or not. is already set to a hundred pound which is in the service manual and then go over with a tensor wrench when they're on the ground. This is what we're doing now. I've 
already put our end season on the stud. You do it by hand, then you can feel if there's a damaged stud. Thank you. 